Okay, we now have um, an incredible presentation this afternoon, um, a case from the heart. Uh, this will include participation from the transplant team, the procurement team, a donor family, and a transplant recipient. We welcome back Dr. Lazonski to this panel, who will be speaking along with Dr. Merrill Johnson, Ronnie Lawrence, Meredith Lee, and Professor Walt Goodman. Dr. Johnson is a professor of medicine in the Division of Cardiovascular Medicine at the University of Wisconsin-Madison School of Medicine and Public Health. Dr. Johnson's clinical interests include the care of patients with severe congestive heart failure, including the use of mechanical cir circulatory support devices and cardiac transplantation. She has a particular interest in the treatment and outcome of congestive heart failure in women. Dr. Johnson is also president-elect of the International Society of Heart and Lung Transplantation. Veronica Lawrence is an organ procurement coordinator at UW Organ and Tissue Donation. She is a certified procurement transplant coordinator with more than 18 years of nursing experience, 13 of which have been in the field of organ and tissue donation. Ms. Lawrence is frequently invited to present on organ donation, organ donor management, donation, consent, and for community education and awareness. In addition, we would like to extend a gracious welcome to Meredith Lee, who is the donor mum of Henry, who died unexpectedly from bacterial meningitis at the age of 21. Henry was a student at UW-Madison. Also, we would like to welcome Walter Goodman, who is a professor of entomology at the UW-Madison College of Agricultural and Life Sciences. Walt's journey to heart transplantation began when he suffered a heart attack in 2011, and uh, Walt received his gift of life from Henry. Meredith Lee, who is, is their donor mum, um, Walt will be opening our presentation. Please give them a warm welcome. Thank you. Well, on behalf of the speakers for this session, as well as myself, I'd like to thank you for sticking around. It's such a nice day out there. I didn't expect to see so many people come back in after the break. Well, the journey that we're about to explore tonight is one that's both physical as well as mental, and it's one that includes not just one person, me, but a whole group of individuals, including uh, one very dedicated caregiver, my wife, a team of highly trained transplant specialists and one very heroic family. Uh, my journey began in May of 2011, as it was just said, and I had a heart attack. It wasn't the eye-rolling, chest-grabbing type of heart attack. No, it was just sort of, I don't feel good. And uh, since I exercised and ate a fairly healthy diet, uh, a heart attack wasn't the first thing on my mind. But nevertheless, I decided, well, I better call the nurse on call. And when I called, she said, uh, call 911. So that May morning, uh, there was no idea that this journey would have begun, and it could have been my last journey. Now, in case you've misspent your youth and didn't crack open a biology book, and I think you pretty well had a good exercise in it today. I've seen it already. Uh, here, I'll just show you, just in case you haven't, uh, the blood flow is fairly uh, straightforward in the human, comes in from, from the right side, your right side, go into the right atrium, right ventricle, then out to the lung, and then it comes back in from the lung and to the left ventricle, and this is the unit that does the heavy lifting and moves the blood from the um, heart itself into the uh, large arteries above and out into the body. And you probably knew that already, but just in case, a few of you might not have seen that. Now, the heart is an amazing organ, as you've already heard, and uh, will continue to hear, and you know yourself. Uh, it's 
fed by a series of coronary arteries that splay out across the surface. And when they do, they are taking the oxygen from the lungs and in the blood and nutri nutrition. And these coronary arteries then inter uh, interdigitate into the muscles and the tissue below and then feed that tissue to make sure it works well. Coronary artery disease, unfortunately, is a very serious problem in this country, as well as across the world, and roughly, at least the CDC's last estimates, and I saw in different numbers this afternoon, roughly about 385,000 Americans die from coronary artery, de artery disease a year. So it's a fairly, it is one of the major killers of, uh, of the population. Now, the first step in my case was uh, I was rushed to St. Mary's Hospital here in town, and the surgeons there decided that a coronary artery stent would work pretty well for me, so they put in several, and uh, things seemed to be going quite well. Um, but about a week later, I was just about ready to be discharged, and uh, everything went south on me, and eventually got worse and worse and worse, and finally I, my journey took me to the Mayo Clinic, and at the Mayo Clinic then, they decided I needed a quadruple bypass. And uh, that was put in, and a couple days later, they realized that wasn't working. My heart was much worse than they thought. And so what they did decide to do was put in an LVAD, which you've heard about. And again, I, I'm sorry for, or um, apologize for uh, telling you this once more. You've seen it already. But here's the HeartMate 2 that I had. Now, now, I was sitting back here being somewhat envious, but I'm glad I don't have to wear it anymore. But uh, seeing this, the size of this is considerably larger than, than uh, you, were, you were seeing in the previous slides. And here you can see this is the pump right here, and it, it's hooked to the ventricle. It comes back around and dumps back into the large artery and, and circulates the blood. Now, the, the issue that uh, that probably wasn't uh, realized is that there's a drive line that comes out of this. This comes out, comes through your body wall and hooks to a computer that's sitting on your waist or a controller. And this is then driven by a couple of batteries, about three and a half pounds each on either side. And uh, after a while carrying this around and you are strapped to this for all your, for your life, uh, it gets to be kind of a, a weighty issue. So, uh, Just for uh, this is uh, actually I learned something this afternoon from Dr. Lazansky that this is a, a relatively old version, but this was the version I had in me, and it has if you can see where it's connected to the ventricle here, it comes down, the blood comes out, passes through this spiral type thing, this screw mechanism. In this case, they see that they've got new ones now, and it came back up over the top and into the uh, arteries that disperse the blood into the into the circulatory system. This, this thing is pretty much pulseless, or at least it was in my case, and I suppose it is for all. And uh, one of the interesting sessions I had with a nurse after I was discharged from the hospital, I came back from Mayo and went to my primary caregiver, and uh, she took my pulse, and she took it again, she took it again, and she looked at me, and her eyes were kind of big, and she says, I've seen my first zombie. And uh, so this is, this is a, a, a situation that... Uh, is somewhat annoying, but nevertheless, you're still alive and you're grateful for being alive. In fact, uh, I can say that the quality of life was pretty good. Uh, I am a professor, as was mentioned, and I went back to work teaching, and I wore a little fanny pack where the batteries stuck uh, back in the back. They couldn't, students didn't even know what I was wearing. And so the quality of life was very good. I could you know, do the teaching and do the research. However, there were situations that came up there was the case of, of continual care of the drive line. There's the fear of a clot getting stuck in this thing right here and the pump itself. There's uh, the drive line becomes contaminated. Uh, there's just a number of different issues and I think you've seen them. Dr. Lozanski reported on some of them and I think you'll see it again with uh, Dr. Johnson's uh, lecture. But these things started to make me think, do I really want to go through life like this the rest of my life with this thing on? Actually, my life was very good. I, appetite came back, everything was normal, started picking up weight. Uh, these, these things actually work very nicely, at least if you're not too far gone. 
Well, um, it was about uh, a year and three months later I finally decided, you know, this is really getting to be somewhat troublesome because of all these fears you have thinking about this and looking at the literature and talking with people. So I decided I would talk to the um, heart, transplant, heart uh, failure team at the University of Wisconsin and see what they would suggest. And this is where you, you as the person wearing this thing has to make a decision. Do you want to keep it? as a destination, do you want to die with this? Or do you want to take the bridge approach and that means try to get a transplant? Well, I went to the heart failure team and this is the team at the time and the team worked over, looked over my records, uh, looked at me for a period of two days in the hospital and then said, okay, we'll think about it. Got a letter in November of that year in 2013 said, yes, you are a candidate for it. And uh, by the way, you could be transplanted tomorrow or it could be three years. And uh, you, you say, okay, that's fine because a number of situations occur. There's not enough hearts to be transplanted. There are blood types. There are all kinds of issues. So the wait begins. Well, fortunately in my case, but unfortunately for the donor, I had to wait for five months. And in April of 2013, I got the call one early one morning, said, we have a heart for you. Are you willing to accept it? Uh, of course, I was at the hospital immediately, and uh, I got my transplant. Now, my journey picked up a lot of fellow journey, journeymen with me. You can see there are a number of teams that were involved in this process of me standing up here today. And the ones, that, whoops, the, the first one, first one is the transplant uh, intake team, and you've already seen a picture of them. Uh, there's the donor management team, and you're going to hear something about that in a, very soon. Then there is the surgical recovery team who didn't come today. Uh, there's the transplant surgeon team, and I was very, very fortunate to have one of the best in the world sitting right here beside me, Dr. Lazonsky. And then finally, a wonderful uh, post-transplant coordination team. And these are the people who, and some of you are already those kind of people, who continually look after me, and I get a call every couple of months to have a blood, blood test or something and reminding me to do something. So this, is a, this was a fantastic team. And because they walked my journey many times before me, that I took my journey, and many times after, I thought it best that I asked them to tell my story.